Hello, Ant Keepers. Welcome back to another episode of My Antics. Today is a very special day for more than one reason. Starting off, it's my birthday. 26 years ago today, I was born to bring you all of the magnificent Ant videos to come. Speaking of being born, I have something very special to show you. And afterwards, we're going to be talking about parasitic queens and colonies. How parasitic insects live their lives in the ant kingdom, and exactly how they come around to having a colony of their own. Let's get into the mix. Before we get on with our video about parasitic insects, I wanted to show you something very special in my eyes. My trap jaw queen's very first nanotic. Just under 12 hours out of her cocoon, and she's already moving around, pumping liquids into all of her legs. Soon she will have full movement, and it'll be an incredible sight to see when I give them their first piece of protein. Let's take a moment now and observe this beautiful baby trap jaw worker. In general, there are many different kinds of parasitic queens in the ant's kingdom. Most commonly known are the Formica and Laceous parasitic queens. Their bodies are not built to go without food for long periods of time and need to act quick to make sure that they have a chance at life. Let's now take a look at one example of a queen doing everything she can to survive. Here we have a Laceus interjectus queen, merged with a colony of Laceus interjectus workers and mature cocoons. Seeing how that these queens cannot make a colony by themselves, I had a local ant keeper in my area donate some of his Laceus interjectus colony that he did succeed with. Giving her a handful of workers and a lot of cocoons makes her realize that it might be time to start laying eggs for herself. Her main mission in life was to find exactly what we gave her, and now she will continue on to a mature, growing colony. Laceus interjectus is one of the biggest yellow field ant species there is in the United States. They are about one and a half times bigger than Laceus flavus and share the yellow color. During the first few trials of this queen's life, we tried to give her Laceus niger and Laceus neo niger and even Laceus flavus. She refused to work with these colonies and ended up killing every one of the workers 
and ripping apart the brood that we gave her. In conclusion, we found out that Laceus interjectus is a very picky species, and the best case for survival for you ant keepers is to find the same kind of species to merge her with. Here we have a Parasite Formica Queen, otherwise known as Formica Subinterga. Formica Subinterga are a little bit different mission-wise when it comes to exactly how they live their lives. This queen's main objective is to steal cocoons and brood from other Formica colonies and raise them as her own. This species is even known to go as far as controlling other colonies' workers that have already hatched with a strong pheromone that links them together, giving them a common name of the slave driver ants. Once this queen establishes a colony from stealing, robbing, and misleading ants, there might even be a time when she wages war against the Formica colony that she stole these very eggs from. Unlike the Laceus Interjectus, I personally have been unable to have her accept any of the brood or other kinds of Formica workers that I've given her so far. She has turned down Formica fusca, and I'm looking for a more capable species that perhaps I can succeed with this species myself. Regardless of the case, she is a very beautiful queen, and if you ever get your hands on one, I would try your best to raise them, but if not, definitely let them go, so they have a chance to raise their own colony on their own time. If you're ever wondering whether or not you caught a parasitic queen for your own, there are a couple different telltale signs that can differentiate both of the queens. To our left, we have our parasitic Formica subinterga. She has a smaller abdomen, and her head is a bit bigger than her thorax. This indicates that she is more or less likely to be a parasite queen. To our right, we have our Formica fusca. Her head is considerably smaller, and her abdomen is a lot bigger. One more major sign that you should all look for is whether or not your queen lays eggs within the first three to seven days. Whether or not a queen lays eggs is a huge sign that she might be infertile or a parasitic queen.
If you ever went ant hunting, you've probably already realized that the chance of finding a parasitic queen is relatively high. Always keep in mind that parasite queens and regular queens go hand in hand in the ant's kingdom, and without one, you cannot have the other. Today we took a look at my beautiful trap jaw colony with her first worker. We also talked about exactly what parasitic queens entail in the ant's kingdom and exactly how they play their role. Assassination, robbing, stealing, and ripping off other colonies. This may be a crime in our world, but in the animal kingdom, it's an everyday thing. Thank you all for watching, and thanks for staying tuned and supporting our channel. Remember, forever, happy ant keeping. Beep, 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 beep.